Hi everybody, this is God Sad for the Sad Truth. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to checking out the book by uh, uh, Sam Harris and uh, Majid Nawaz, uh, uh, which is based on their dialogue on the future of Islam. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a supporter of uh, Majid to the extent that he is certainly trying to do something laudable, and that is to uh, change the discourse as relating to uh, how one might go about uh, reforming uh, some of the problematic tenets of uh, the religion. And so in this grand sense, I'm certainly a supporter of his grand project. Uh, on the other hand, as the expression says, uh, the devil is in the details, or God is in the details. And so the question is, how do you go about uh, implementing such a reformation if you at first uh, concede that a reformation is needed. If you believe that the religion is perfect, uh, the words are immutable, the words are eternal, not to be changed in one bit, then of course that puts an end to a discussion of reformation. But assuming that there is a need for reformation, uh, some of uh, Nawaz's positions uh, I must respectfully disagree with. I, I should mention that I was first exposed to him at a intelligence squared uh, debate that I had watched where he was on the camp uh, against Ayan Hirsi Ali. She and another debater, I can't remember who it was, uh, were arguing that uh, Islam is not a religion of peace while he was arguing with, with a fellow uh, debater that uh, it was indeed. And at the time, uh, I disagreed with uh, quite a bit of what he had said. It seems that in the last few years, he seems to have uh, certainly altered some of his beliefs in that uh, he now concedes that, to sort of paraphrase his words, it is plausible that some of the uh, problematic tenets could be interpreted uh, in a negative manner. Uh, that smells profoundly postmodernist, and while I am sure he wouldn't be happy for me to compare him to Reza Aslan, in a sense he's, ex he's engaging in exactly the same type of postmodernist gibberish, right? So I saw him in a recent interview on The Agenda, a show here in Canada, where he basically said, you know, Islam is neither a religion of peace nor a religion of uh, war. Uh, you know, it's whatever you make it out to be. Some people interpret the text to be this, others interpret it to be that, and so it's whatever. Well, that's exactly the position that Reza Aslan takes. Um, he then argues that he prefers to use the behaviors of the adherents of the religion in evaluating uh, the veracity of the position as to whether Islam is peaceful or not. And so to the extent that uh, the majority of uh, Muslims don't go around uh, on, you know, global killing mayhem, uh, then hey, he uses that uh, overt behavior to inform uh, his position. Now that's profoundly silly, right? That's like arguing that if we wish to know whether Judaism condones or condemns the consumption of pork, we should look at uh, the behavior of Jews. And so if we see that a large swath of Jews actually consume pork, well then that's what really the religion is all about. It's all about the consumption of pork. No. Uh, pork is... Uh, the, the consumption of pork is forbidden in Judaism. That's Judaism. Now, many Jews choose to ignore that tenet. That's not Judaism, right? So they don't consume, I mean, they consume pork despite the Jewish edict that they not engage in that particular culinary choice. So using behavior to establish uh, the contents of a tenet is not necessarily the way to go. And then thirdly, he, uh, as he was discussing, uh, you know, these issues with uh, Steve Pakin on the agenda, he said something that I found profoundly troubling. He, at one point, he was talking about the hadith that basically refers to uh, the rules of apostasy. So if you are uh, Muslim and then you leave Islam, uh, the rules are very clear. You should be killed. It is stated in a very broad range of sources. Uh, and as a matter of fact, what I've provided you at the bottom of this uh, clip, um, I, 
have a, a little segment from uh, Sheikh Yusuf Al Karadawi, who is one of the preeminent uh, Islamic scholars in Sunni Islam. He's got about as clean a pedigree in terms of his knowledge of Islam as one can hope to have. Uh, he is he is a spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, so one could certainly not say that this guy you know, is a fake Muslim, does not understand Islam and so on, and just watch what he says about apostasy law. Now, what does Majid say? He says, well, you know, he who changes his religion, kill him. Well, that's kind of fuzzy. It could mean many things because, you see, it doesn't specifically say uh, he who changes out of his Islamic religion. So the Hadith could, could imply that anybody who changes, uh, you know, any religion, so if you change into Islam, the Hadith could apply to that. Well, any serious person knows that that's not what the Hadith means, which, by the way, it's not only one Hadith, there are several, and then there are also some elements in the Quran, as you'll see in the clip by Al-Karadawi, that also speak to this apostasy law. An apostate is a murtad in Arabic. So, uh, again, I strongly admire uh, Majid for his courage. I think He's certainly the type of modern, secular uh, Muslim who uh, hopefully is going to move the discussion forward. But I don't think that by building uh, unicorns, uh, is, you know, we're going to really advance much. Uh, having all sorts of postmodern mental gymnastics to try to find ways to reinterpret uh, texts that are profoundly clear and understood as such by uh, Islamic clerics for, you know, many, many centuries is not the way to go. So I strongly support his, uh, his quest to, uh, you know, enrich the, the discourse on this topic, although I'm not sure that I agree with some of his uh, mental gymnastics. Hope you enjoyed this little interlude. Uh, eventually, I hope to, of course, read the book, uh, at which time I might have a lot more to say on the topic. Uh, have a great uh, end of Sunday. Have a great week next week. Talk to you soon. Ciao.